Okay, scholars, this is our listen and respond for today, uh, Green Group. It's called Islandborn by Juno Diaz. So first, what we need to do is on our respond and blog document, I want you to fill in the title of the story, Islandborn. So if you'll notice, I've changed up our respond and blog document a little bit to make it a little bit easier to understand and a little bit easier to get through. So the first part, I need you to put your name and the date and then the title of the story. I've added Spanish to every question so that if we may be a little confused on things, maybe we could look at the Spanish and help us understand a little bit better what the question is asking. So the first one says, as college ready readers, we always use college ready sentences. We always support our ideas with evidence from the text. So preview, readers always collect clues before they get started reading. So look at the front and the back covers of the book before you start reading or listening to the story and fill in this chart. So what do you think this book is going to be about? And why do you think this? So with the first one, I've done sentence starters for us. So I think this book will be about blank. Another thing this book might be about is blank. I think this because, I think this because. So you're just going to finish each thought with what you think it's going to be about. So let's look at the front cover. Here's the front cover. And here is the back cover. So using this, make your prediction about what you think this is going to be about in these first blanks and then tell me why you think this. After you've done that, you're ready to move on. So we're gonna go ahead and start reading. So if you need to do that, go ahead and pause the video and then after you've written those down, you can come back. So the first page, Island Born. Every kid in Lola's school was from somewhere else. Hers was the school of faraway places. Mai was from a city so big that it was like its own country. India and Camila were from a stony village at the tippy top of the world. Mateo had lived in a desert so hot even the cactus fainted. Newt was born in a jungle famous for its tigers and its poets. And Lola was from the island. So when her teacher, Mrs. Obi, told the class, please draw a picture of the country you are originally from, your first country, and bring it in tomorrow, everyone got super excited. I'm going to put in pyramids, said Dahlia, and I'll draw a canal this long, Franklin said. There's going to be a mongoose in mine, Nelson yelled. Nelson always yelled. Everyone was talking about their drawings, everyone but Lola. Lola, you see, loved to draw but she had left the island when she was just a baby, so she didn't remember any of it. Lola raised her hand. She hated raising her hand almost as much as she hated Nelson's yelling. Miss, what if you don't remember where you are from? What if you left before you could start remembering? No problema, Miss Obi said. Are there people around you who do remember? Like my whole neighborhood, Lola said, and they're always talking about the island. Well then, Miss Obi started, maybe... But Lola finished her sentence. I should talk to everyone who does remember. I should draw from their memories. It's a very good plan, Lola, Miss Obi said with a smile. Lola started feeling better about the assignment. When she saw all the other kids chatting excitedly about what they were going to draw, it made her sad. Everybody was remembering her, their first home, even Nelson, who forgot everything. Nelson even forgot his last name once for like an hour. Lola had always wanted to remember the island, but no matter how hard she tried, she never could. It was like a familiar word just at the tip of your tongue, but instead of a word, this was an entire world. Lola closed her eyes and tried to recall anything about the island, but nothing came up. She kept trying all through the school day to help her focus. She put her fingers on the sides of her head like her abuela's psychic sometimes did. Okay, guys, let's pause here. I want you to get out your respondent blog paper and look where it says characters and setting. Readers note that understanding the characters and setting of a story helps them understand what's going on. So you're going to list the characters from the story and what do you know about them? So I know the first character is Lola. And I know she's from the island. Not sure where that is yet, but hopefully they'll tell us soon. And I know she doesn't, she left when she was a baby and she likes to draw because it said that she liked to draw what else do we have we have her classmates we have her teacher 
you can fill in with other people if you don't want to use these because these might be kind of hard. There might be more characters coming up later. I'm not sure. So then the next part says, what is the setting of the story? The setting of the story is, so it seems like they've been at school, at Lola's school. But I bet, and you know, that settings can change. So if it does, why don't you go ahead and write it in down here? How does the setting match with what is happening with the characters? So I put this sentence starter here. The setting matches what is happening with the characters because, so what I want you to think about here is Lola has been at school and her teacher gave her some homework to do. Would that make sense if she was at the mall? Would that make sense if she was at the park? Why does it matter that she's at school based off what's happening in the story? If she was at the mall and her teacher gave her an assignment, would that make a lot of sense? Probably not because you don't get assignments from your teacher at the mall. So think about why the, the author, Juno Diaz, why did he make the setting of the story the school, like where she's at school? Why does that matter? And that's what you're going to fill in this blank. After you finish that, you can come back and watch the rest of the video. Are you okay? Her cousin Leticia asked as they walked home from school together. I have to draw a picture of the island, Lola explained, but I was just a baby when we left. Prima, you have to help me. I don't remember a lot either, except for the bats. They were as big as blankets, and they used to chase after me at night. Blanket bats! Lola pulled out her notebook and began to sketch. Leticia stopped Mrs. Bernard, who always sold them crispy empanadas after school. Mrs. Bernard, what do you remember most about the island? Why, the music, of course. The whole country is like the inside of a guerra, like the inside of a drum. You mean like our neighborhood? Lola asked. The neighborhood had so much music, it was like a radio with a dial broken off. On the island, there's even more music. There's more music than air. And everyone is always dancing. Even in their sleep, people dance. Sleep dancing, Lola sketched. Leticia led Lola into the barber shop that her brother Jonathan owned. Lola has to do an assignment about the island. She needs to know what you remember most about it. Wepa, said Jonathan, laughing, the agua de coco. How wonderful it tastes when you drink it right from the coconut. Mr. Rodriguez sat up in his chair. And the mangoes that are the size of your head and so sweet. They make you want to cry, Lola said. She loved mangoes. That's it exactly. How much color there is, said the woman waiting on with her son. Colorful cars, colorful houses, flowers everywhere. Even the people are like a rainbow. Every shade ever made. Like us in here, Lola said. Even more color, the woman said. Agua, mango heads, rainbow people. Lola was trying to keep up. The island sounds so beautiful. Why did we even leave? Well, it isn't all beautiful, the woman's son said. The heat is on you like five bullies, the oldest barber muttered, and other things. Like what? Lola wanted to ask, but the oldest barber had already turned away. In the lobby of their building, the cousins ran into Mr. Mir, the superintendent. Leticia called out, Hey, Mr. Mir, can you tell us what you remember most about the island? Nobody cares about that old stuff, Mr. Mir grumbled. Just be glad that you live here. Don't listen to him, Leticia said. Keep going and call me later if you need any help, okay? I will, Lola said. When Lola got into the elevator, she put her fingers on her temples and closed her eyes. Island, she called. It was like, like it was a cat. Island, but like a cat, the island did not come. At home, Lola found her abuela at the kitchen table trying to finish a puzzle. Abuela loved puzzles. Abuela, I'm supposed to draw a picture of the island for school, but I don't remember it. Why don't I remember it? Iha, you were just a baby when we left. But the other kids remember. Just because you don't remember a place doesn't mean it's not in you. Will you tell me what you remember most? Lola asked. Of course, what I remember most is the beaches. Iha, our beaches are poetry. You know when you hear your favorite poem? 
That's how it is to be on our beaches. Fish jump from the waves into your lap, and at sunset, sometimes the dolphins will come out of the water to bow goodnight. And up north, where I'm from, there are even whales in the surf. Beach poetry, dolphins, surfing whales. Lola sketched as fast as she could. Lola's mother struck her he stuck her head in from the kitchen. Yeehaw, what I remember most is the hurricane that hit the island right after you were born. Like the biggest, baddest wolf of all, it huffed and puffed and blew thousands of houses into the sky. Where were we? Lola asked, her eyes wide. We were hiding under the bed is where we were, Abuela said. That's right, her mother said, and you know what? You never cried once. You were such a brave little girl. I wish I could remember that, Lola sighed. Well, it happened, her mother said. You might not remember the island, but it remembers you. You should really talk to Mr. Mir, Abuela suggested. He knows more about the island than almost anybody. We tried asking him, Lola said, but he didn't want help. Mr. Mir can be a little grouchy sometimes. Let me talk to Mrs. Mir. I bet you we can get him to help. Abuela called downstairs and shouted at Mrs. Mir, who then shouted at Mr. Mir. The old people were always shouting at each other. That's how they talked. Maybe Nelson was an old person in training. Go on down, Abuela said. Mr. Mir said he would try and help. So, readers, I want you to pause right here because we are going to make a prediction. Readers, always guess what might happen next. What do you think might happen next? So, and why do you think this? So, something I think might happen next is blank. I think this because blank. Another thing I think might happen next is blank. And I think this because blank. So I know earlier Lola stopped Mr. Mir and she tried to ask him about the about the island. Right right here, right? And he did not he said, Nobody cares about that old stuff. Just be glad that you live here. So he seems like he didn't want to talk about it. But now grandma called him and got him to agree to meet with Lola. So what do you think? He's going to say, and why do you think this? So give me two things and two reasons why. Lola was a little nervous, but that didn't stop her from knocking on the super's door. Mrs. Mir let her in. Look how big you've gotten, Lola. Mr. Mir is in his workshop. Go right in. Mr. Mir looked up from the contraption he was fixing. Your grandma says you've been interviewing people about the island. Lola nodded nervously. Yes, sir, it's for a class assignment. What if they told you? She flipped through her sketches. Bat blankets, more music than air, fruit that makes you cry, beach poems, and a hurricane like a wolf. I see, Mr. Mir said. So no one told you about the monster? Lola's eyes got wide. She shook her head no. Even those who know don't always want to talk about him. Mr. Muir turned toward the old worn, map, old worn map he had of the island. Our island has always been a beautiful place. It was when I was your age, and it is today. But even the most beautiful places can attract a monster. A long time ago, long before you were born, that's exactly what happened. A monster fell upon our poor island. For once, Lola's pencil didn't move. So I want you to pause here and go back into your respondent blog document and go to the page that says visualize. Readers always think about how this story might look in their heads. So make your mind movie about this monster. So what do you think this part of the story might look like? And why do you think this? So the sentence starter here says, I am imagining the part in the story where Mr. Mir talks about the monster and I see in my head so I want to know what you see in your head when he's talking about this monster are you seeing a person are you seeing an actual monster describe what it looks like to me so I see in my head I don't see an actual monster I see a very bad man like maybe a guy who has a lot of like a military guy with lots of medals on his jacket and an angry face. Okay, and why do I think this? I think this because I know a lot of people who come to the United States 
come here to escape bad leaders. So a lot of people who come to U.S. come to escape bad leaders. So that's why I'm imagining this person like this. So I want you to take a minute and try and like try to think about what you first saw in your brain. Don't think about what I said. I'm just trying to give you an example. So I want you to think what was the first thing that you saw in your head when Mr. Mir started talking about the monster. After you filled in both blanks, then you can come back to the story and finish up. It was the most dreadful monster anyone had ever seen. The whole island was terrified and no one could defeat it. It was just too strong. For 30 years, the monster did as it pleased. It could destroy an entire town with a single word and make a whole family disappear simply by looking at it. Lola's curly hair was uncurling with fear. Did you see the monster, Mr. Mir? Yes, all the time. Were you scared? We were all very scared. So this must be how Lola is imagining the monster to look. This is like what Lola pictures in her brain. Right? This is her mind movie, her visualization of the monster that Mr. Mir is talking about. Lola's heart was pounding. So what happened next, Mr. Mir? What should always happen to monsters? Heroes rose up. Strong, smart young women just like you, Lola, and a few so strong, smart young men too. They got tired of being afraid and they fought the monster. What a titanic battle that was. The whole island shook from their struggle. The monster tried all of its evil tricks, but in the end, the heroes found the monster's weakness and banished it forever. Wow, Lola whispered. What happened to the heroes? No one knows, really. It was so long ago. Mr. Mir took off his glasses and sighed. Anyway, you should get back upstairs. It's getting close to dinner time. Thank you, Mr. Mir, Lola said. Thank you for all your help. How did it go? Lola's mother asked. It was really good. Lola looked at the blank page in her hands. Lola spent the rest of the night drawing the island. She started out with one page, but she needed more room. So she added another page and then another, and soon she had a book. She worked through dinner and she worked in bed, and she was just finishing the last touches on the cover when her abuela came in to check on her. Abuela picked up a drawing of the final battle, and she got really still. Abuela, did you know about the monster? Of course, Iha. Why do you think so many of us are here in the north? Lola put her arms around her abuela. You must have been so scared. Sometimes we were, her abuela whispered, but we were also brave. The next day, it snowed. Lola put on her scarf and boots and stuffed her assignment under her coat. Benedicion, mami. Benedicion, abuela. Benedicion, hija. They both called. Good luck. Mr. Mir was pushing a garbage can against the curb. Thank you, Mr. Mir, slayer of monsters. He laughed. Good luck, Lola, daughter of heroes. In class, all the students were buzzing about their pictures. Nelson's mother had baked cupcakes for everyone, so it was like a little party. Mrs. Obie hung the drawings on the wall. Now our classroom has windows, she said. Anytime you want to look at one another's first homes, all you have to do is look out the windows. Then Mrs. Obie reached Lola's desk. So how did it go, Lola? Were you able to remember anything? I tried really, really hard, but nothing came, and that made me feel bad. But then I realized that I don't have to feel bad because even if I'd never set foot on the island, it doesn't matter. The island is me. Nelson snorted. That is so corny. It is not. Nelson, be nice, Mrs. Obie said. She and the other students gathered around Lola's desk. Nelson made sure he got real close so he could see everything. Lola suddenly got nervous. Go ahead, Lola, show us. Okay, Lola said, taking a deep breath. She opened her book. and outburst the island. So that's the end of the book.
So now what you're going to do is jump into your respondent blog paper and you're going to summarize. Readers think about the most important parts of the book. In your own words, give me a summary of the story you just listened to. So the story, title of the story, so we're going to put that right here, Island Born, talks about Lola and her neighborhood, right? In the beginning of the story, what happens at the beginning? In the middle, what happens in the middle? And at the end, what is the ending? What happens at the end? So go ahead and fill that out. And after you've done that, you're going to flip to the back. You're going to do this part. It's the blog. So you're going to open up Google Classroom for your color. And it says at the top, it says like share, comment with class. And that's where you're going to click and write this at. So you're going to pick one of these things, just one. So you do not have to do both. You're picking this one or this one. So if you choose this one, making connections, you're going to answer the questions here or follow the instructions here. If you choose story continued, you're going to follow these instructions. So making connections says, readers think about ways a book is similar to their own lives. So if you choose this, you're going to title the post, making connections to Island Born. So you're going to write this. And right here, you're going to put island born on, you're going to type it onto the post. So then you're going to either, you write about how you can connect to this book. Did something in the book remind you of something you know about in the real world? Did something you read remind you of something you've read in another book or you've seen in a movie? Maybe you can connect to Lola. Maybe you can connect to one of the other kids in the story. Maybe you have like family that you can connect to like that Lola visited. After you've written this, you can find a picture on Google to, to match your work, and then you're going to paste it into your comment, and then you click post, and then you're finished. So you could click turn in if you did this online, or make sure your name is on the paper and put it in the drawer for your grade. Or if you don't want to do making connections, you want to do story continued, readers think about what might happen next if this book were to keep going. So you'll title the post, Island Born continued so this will be your title island born continued after you click share comment so then you'll write about what you think might happen next after lola shows her pictures to her class what do you think the kids are going to say what do you think lola's going to do and then after you've done that you can find a picture on google and paste it into your comment and then click post so when you're finished with that if you chose that one and you've finished all those things you're finished so if you did this online, you're going to click turn in. If you did it on paper, make sure your name is at the top and then put it in the drawer for your grade. If you're not finished and you need to hold, then you need to hold on to this paper until Friday and turn it in on Friday. If you, once you've done that, you can move to Lexia, IXL, or Moby Max.